Howdy folks, welcome to Weed and Whiskey News. I'm your host, J-Man, and I'm jazzed that on today's episode, we have several guests. Joining us today is the co-founder and CEO of Willie Nelson's Luck Reunion, Matt Beiser, and then Clayton Moore from Texas A&M University will join us on the couch, and we'll close it out with Jordan and Parker Bergeron from Infinite Greens. Robert Head will share with us recent news on hemp and veterans and update us on his cannabis reality TV series. Kim the Hemp Housewife is in the field bringing us a snapshot of Martin House Brewery. I'll share my two grams on the words 420 and why it's kind of special to me. All this and more when we come back right after a word from our sponsors. Stay tuned. We took the best journalists from politics, health, innovations, cuisine, business, travel, agriculture, and then we put weed in it. Welcome to Weed and Whiskey News. Weed and Whiskey News. News with a twist. Learn the medical benefits. See the success stories. Watch real results. It's Miracles of Marijuana, coming in 2023. back and cutting to Kim the Hemp Housewife who's at the Martin House Brewery. Take it away, Kim. Oh, I'm amazing. I can't believe that the Hemp Housewife is here taking a dab with me at Greenleaf. What is up, can of fam and friends? It's Kim the Hemp Housewife with Weed and Whiskey TV. And you know, some of my core values for my brand and business are community, connection, gratitude, and respect. And that is something that you're definitely going to find in and around the Texas cannabis community. And if you've got a story to share about your cannabis business, Weed and Whiskey TV and The Hemp Housewife would love to hear it. Please send an email to Kim at thehemphousewife.com and we'll see about getting Weed and Whiskey on the road to you. in Fort Worth, Texas, and I got my man Shug over here, and we're talking about their collaboration with our friends at Power Bio Farms. They have made a prickly pear and watermelon sour with turps, and this doesn't actually have the hemp plant in it. It's no. got the terpene profile from some of the strains that our friends at Power Bio Farms grow, correct? Correct. That's a, yeah, you should add some liquid terpenes to it, so yeah, no actual THC or anything in it. It's just terpenes, prickly pear, watermelon, sour. 100% alcohol exactly. by volume. So this is, it could get, you know, get you squirm on with it. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your collaboration and how that came about. And it's really cool. They're kicking it off and launching it on 420. And yes, tell us about right. your party as well. So. All right, yeah. So um, the Power of Bioforms people, we, have, we do a lot of events out here at the brewery. Um, and a lot of vendors come out. And one day we met them at just one of our parties. And they seemed like cool people. So we started hanging out. And then we just floated the idea we need a 420 beer. Yeah. And, um, asked them if they were down. Amazing. So, yeah, they came out. We had some beers and yeah. talked about what we could do together. So we decided on this prickly pear watermelon sour because we do a lot of sours. Mm -hmm. And they're also making the gummy the D9 THC gummy and it's yes. going to be the same flavor. And that is so. already for sale on the Power Bio Farms website. They did uh, a collaboration in their store with uh, Martin House Brewery as well. So it's kind of a whole big, uh, full circle type collaboration. Just a little bit about your 420 party that you're going to be having to show. All right, 420. So it's coming up very soon. Yes. Um, so that one, that's when we're going to launch this beer. This is a taproom exclusive, so you can't get it out in the wild. You have to come to Martin House. Mm -hmm. um, the biofarm people, they're going to be out here selling the gummies um, yes. just for that day only, but it is available on their website. What time? Uh, I think it's going to be it's 4 to 8. 4 to 8. 4 to 8 on Thursday, 420. Perfect. And other than that, we're going to have some food trucks. We're going to have some munchies, a little music. It's going to be a yes. nice little party at the brew. I love the munchies. Thank you. 
Power Bio Farm, and they're showing me the Power Bio Farm Martin House Brewery Gummy Collaboration. This is the Prickly Pear Watermelon. These are going to be sour AF. Let's try one. I was here whenever the guys from uh, the brewery came by to see how sour they were going to make these, so I'm really excited to see what they taste like. Oh, mother pucker. Those are really sour. These are available on Power Bio Farms website. We'll get that posted. They also told me that when these went on sale yesterday, it was one of the highest days that they had for their gummy sales. So that's badass. Thank you, Martin House, for sending even more people over here to see what it's like to be in Texas cannabis. Also on 420, don't forget, meet us over at Martin House Brewery out here in Fort Worth, Texas. We're gonna be showing you the Power Sour. Biopower Farm, Martin House Brewery in collaboration, the prickly pear and watermelon sour with terps. Kim, the hemp housewife, and I am here at Chiba Hut. And guess what? We are partnering together for 420. Be bringing DFW the munchies. Make sure all of our favorite plant medicine shops in DFW are well fed. So please let us know who you think mama should take the munchies to. Don't worry, babes. Mama will be there soon. Thanks so much, Kim, for checking out Martin House Brewery. Don't forget to check out Kim's Mama Needs a Minute brand. Quick break, then Robert Head. The Texas Hemp Report is available free at over 1,000 CBD and smoke shops across Texas. McAllen, Houston, Austin, Dallas, Lubbock, and San Antonio. Texas lawmakers will be in session this year to improve or alter laws on cannabis products. So stay tuned and informed this legislative season with the Texas Hemp Show podcast and the Texas Hemp Reporter magazine. Would you like to host the Texas Hemp Show podcast at your business or special? Special event now booking live broadcast from your location with our new demo vehicle, the Texas Green Machine. Email Russell at Texas Hemp Reporter at gmail.com. This man has a buzz for himself and for four of his friends. He also has a five left out of a ten. Five gummies, five bucks. That's Buck a Buzz. Ask for him at a store near you. Buck a Buzz. Visit buckabuzz.com. Welcome back, partakers. Let's hear what news we have about our veterans and cannabis reality from our veteran correspondent from Hip for Victory, Robert Head. Howdy, Robert. Share with our partakers your four minutes and 20 seconds. Hey, guys. Appreciate it being back on. As always, I enjoy it. You know what? Veterans like to garden. It soothes the warrior's soul. Cultivating your own food and medicine has an, has an effect of accomplishment and calming the body. In 2018, the Royal College of Physicians wrote an article detailing the benefits of gardening for mental health, especially when it comes to veterans with PTSD. Hillside, a mental wellness facility that's been around since 1888, discussed the origins of horticultural therapy. Right? Horticultural therapy is a, new a newer profession, uh, but the practice itself has been around since the 19th century. The father of American psychiatry, Dr. Benjamin Rush, also known for signing the Declaration of Independence, first documented the positive effects of gardening for individuals with mental illness. Hospitals and asylums encouraged patients to spend time in the gardens to soothe and distract them from the daily demands of their conditions. The U.S. government began establishing veteran hospitals in the 1940s and provided gardens on the grounds. And the service members, service members that were there were reported remarkable improvements in their emotional, physical, and mental health well-being while working on plants in these gardens. From there, Formal training programs began forming in the 70s and the 80s, coining the term horticultural therapy and working to improve multifunctional lives of numerous people. 
Now, this is the reason why supporting home grow is so very important for the veteran community. Whether it's outside in a lush garden, a nook in your apartment, or a closet in the room for your grow tent, the ability to grow your own food and vegetables is still, it still has a very therapeutic effect, even though it's not under the guidance of a doctor. We gave away three grow tents to KC Canifest 23, and would like to have an opportunity to give away more. So if this is something that you sounds like you would be interested in and you believe in home growth and like to see veterans uh, get tents, contact us for sponsorship. And also to remember to check out our uh, Weed and Whiskey channel. We put up co uh, constant new material all the time about cannabis reality, from sexual trauma to what cannabis is doing for the body and why we see pill reductions in veterans. So join me and, uh, every week and we'll talk more about cannabis and vets. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Robert, for this great information. You know, folks, when I was younger, my dad had several tours of combat in Vietnam, and he always had a garden when he came back from being overseas. And I realize now what that benefit was for him, and it's exciting to know that the guys at Hemp for Victory are trying to help our veterans with getting these grow tents, okay? Uh, we're also working to bring an eight-part series with a panel of subject matter experts, and we're going to bring you more information as this continues to develop. If you'd like to make a donation to sponsor this series or a donation in general, just get in touch with Robert Head because Hemp for Victory is a 501c nonprofit and your sponsorship or your donation is tax deductible. Quick commercial break, then my two grams on the urban legend of 420. Infusion, tasting, weekly recipes, celebrity chefs, coming in 2023 only on Weed and Whiskey TV. Welcome back, partakers. It's exciting to have a team of plain talkers and straight shooters sharing real information and news, and we are thankful for their efforts each week. Here's my two grams on 420. According to Time Magazine, 420 can be traced to 1971 when a group of five students at San Rafael High School in Marin County, California, began meeting at 420 p.m. to smoke marijuana. Well, folks, I read that these folks, these kids were called the Waldos, and they would go to the Louis Pasteur uh, statue there at the school, and they would uh, get together, and they'd uh, smoke a joint, right? And so that's the urban legend, or pretty much the consensus of, of, of how 420 got started off got started up as an acronym for getting high or marijuana or using marijuana. Um, I... I'm lucky that my birthday is on 420. And you know, I started my cannabis use in 1974, and it was in, uh, let's see, uh, the 90s before I actually ever heard that term 420. It was in the early 90s. Somebody asked me what my birthday was. I said 420. They said, oh, 420, you must get high. And I said, well, what do you mean? I did get high, but I didn't want anybody to know at the time. So what are you talking about? Well, 420, that means get high. Didn't even know nothing about it. And darn it if my birthday isn't on that day. So that's why 420 is really special to me. You know, 420 has been used for a lot of things. When they dedicated the Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson sculpture down in Austin, it was on 420. A lot of things revolve around this date. And thank you, thank you, thank you for letting it be my birthday, which is coming right up. Okay. Up next in our studio interview are Matt Beiser from the Luck Reunion, Clayton Moore, the founder of Chill, and the husband and wife team of Jordan and Parker Bergeron from Infinite Greens. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.
recipe. Celebrity Chefs. Coming in 2023. Only on Weed and Whiskey TV. Howdy folks, I'm Jay Man, and welcome to our in-studio interviews. My guest is Matt Beiser. Matt is the executive producer, creative director, and founder of Luck Reunion and Luck Presents, based at Willie Nelson's Luck Texas Ranch, an 11-year event organization that sells out annually before the lineup is even announced. Luck Reunion has been dubbed the anti-Coachella event by Fast Company. The brand has expanded from the once annual event to a year-round event in content management organization. Luck is my only do not miss event each year and I'm proud to call this man my friend. Matt Beiser, welcome to the hey, show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Well, you're just coming off uh, Luck 11 and I guess you got your hands full for the end of the month. Yeah, definitely. We're coming up on Willie's birthday. So, yeah, you know, that's 90 a years. big holiday around here. Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that event. Yeah, so Luck this year was uh, it's our 11th year, which is crazy to say at this point, but uh, 11 years strong. We, uh, we actually had an interesting year. We actually had to pivot a day because of a big rainstorm that rolled through Texas kind of right before the festival. So we pushed it a day forward. Everyone stuck with us. We only lost one band in the transition, which was amazing. And uh, it's but, been but, but a really you brought up, year. you brought in a ringer to replace that. But Margo Price was yeah. able to, to yeah, play no, and exactly. fill in, I believe. Is exactly, yeah. yeah. Margo jumped up with a band of heathens and created a new kind of like power set, like she always does. Yeah. So always there for us. And yeah. so we had a really great year. It was amazing. Great, great. Well, so now at the end of the month, there's a two day thing that's going on, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, well, the end of the month, uh, we have Willie's birthday, obviously, right, out at the right. Hollywood Bowl. That, that's it's Hollywood gonna be a Bowl. big project. So that's a big one that's been being planned for a long time. So yeah. if you find yourself out in Los Angeles with uh, a really lucky to get a ticket. To come by if you yeah. can find one. The only so, ticket might be harder than luck right well, now. Well, I was gonna <laughs> say, sort of like a luck ticket, yeah. you know? It's great the way that you've um, positioned luck, Matt. You know, we are fortunate that we've been involved uh, from the heartbreaker, we were a citizen, and then uh, in 16, when it became the luck reunion, we've been involved ever since. And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to do this. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously, like Willie Nelson inspired us to start. I think that the the project originally came about as sort of an answer to the, the, just the evolving music community and, and kind of the community in general of Austin as it as it grew you start to see a place for some of the like the Austin that you we grew up in. I'm from Texas, Central Texas, and so Austin was always sort of that that weird city, the artist city, the music city. You know, it was it was really about community in this smaller place of like independent and discovery and building things from the ground up. And so, you know, as it grew, we started to see the community shift a little bit, and we started to lose that platform for young artists to be discovered. We started to lose that platform for people to really get focused. They're getting kind of like lost in the noise. And so what we really wanted to create was something that gave that opportunity and platform for people to kind of grow and expand what they were doing. Um, and in the process of that, uh, you know, I was I worked on a movie with Willie and his family. Ellie Fletcher, who's our other, or Derniak, who's our other partner uh, in the festival, had like taken me out to luck and I saw the the property and it was very quickly that I realized, I mean, this is Willie Nelson's magical, it's like the Oz of, you know, country music and, and Willie, you know, they weren't really utilizing it and some of it was in disrepair and there was some real needs. And so in a really serendipitous kind of way, you know, between crossing paths from film and working with the family, getting to know them a little bit, um, I actually ended up at a dinner with Willie and his wife, and there was sort of a, a nudge, nudge, like, tell them about your idea. And I just mentioned that we wanted to throw a festival. Um, we thought it'd be really cool to have an event at Luck. And they they basically, like, chuckled and said, get insurance, which I thought was a joke. <laughs> and a year later, we were producing a festival. And so yeah. since then, it's really been reacting to the community itself and the right. community of Austin and the community of artists and then sort of, like, trying to build a space that holds space and time for like preserving the legacy that Willie's kind of left us, which is really like inclusion and open openness to new things and challenging sort of some of the norms and pushing through things. You know, he's been an advocate for so many, you know, instances and in, including like the cannabis industry, which sure. is a huge, sure. you know, step and sustainability. For him. Yeah. He's a big proponent of state. Exactly. I think Rivian or somebody uh, hustled up some vehicles at this last uh, yeah. uh, uh, luck. We had those out on display. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Willie actually, Willie and Annie both got their first, they got Rivian trucks this year. So right. they actually just got their first electric uh, trucks out of the ranch. And so Rivian was out there actually giving people shuttle rides. 
And then also we partner with Reverb, uh, which is a big climate change revolution partner. Right. Um, so we're working with them on a green initiative with Luck. So we're kind of pledging to be carbon neutral as soon as we can in the next couple of years, hopefully even carbon positive. Um, and we actually did for the first time ever, I think we're a pilot program for, for a lot of other festivals. We did a, uh, a solar initiative this year. So all of our stages, our main stage and other stages, ran off of solar powered batteries. Wow, so of I, I, I remember seeing all the yeah. panels out there. I thought those were charging those Rivian trucks. No, but, uh, yeah, the whole festival is running off. Everything. Yeah, we ran off grid. Well, well, and, the, the ranch uh, itself solar. has a, 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 an agricultural sustainability program going on, I think, don't they? Uh, yeah, so uh, a couple, about two, during, kind of during the pandemic, about two or three years ago, uh, Tara Poretta was a uh, local farmer group. They were working at the farmer's market down the road, and Willie's wife, Annie, had come across them and said, what are you guys working on? And they had told her that they were working on programs to essentially uh, kind of like reclaim pasture land in Texas, like get grasslands back, get back to some sustainable practices. And so in that conversation, she actually uh, invited them onto the property. And so wow. they've been working on bringing back sort of the native grasslands. Maybe the they could move that on over across the street to the golf course. It needs a little love <laughs> it needs over there. A, maybe a little grass <laughs> yeah, over there yeah, too. Yeah, it yeah, might be better. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Matt, I got to tell you, I've been fortunate to, to be at a lot of Luck events and bring people that was their first time to be at Luck. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you've created something that they talk about all the time once they've been there. Uh, there's something about the energy on that property, I think. Think that creates this culture of uh, wanting to be a part of what luck represents. And uh, I think you deserve a, a lot of credit, uh, you and Ellie both, for uh, uh, seeing this, uh, building it up, pivoting during the damn pandemic thing, right? You know, yeah. right there, right there beforehand, you had to do that, but you've able to recover and 11 was the biggest event that you've had. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it really was. I mean, it, I think that it's been a really special uh, chance to work with this, this place. I mean, it's to work with Willie and the family is an honor every year. And I think that like the land and that space, there's something magical about it. I mean, there's there nothing is. to say. There you is. get well, there thinking about, property. You know, uh, Micah and, and, and Lucas, that's where they grew up and ran around, you know, and they've done pretty decent with their music careers. Exactly. You know, those roots there on that property, it's just a, uh, it's just a, uh, uh, if you've never been to Luck, folks, you don't even know what it's about. There's a little saying, I think, if you're uh, if you're not in Luck, you're out of Luck or something yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. That's Willie's well, classic line. <laughs> yeah. Well, Matt, we're going to have to wrap up. Look at this camera here and tell people yeah. how they can find out more about Luck Presents and, and the Luck Reunion. Definitely. So uh, if you'd like to find us, go to uh, luckpresents.com or at Luck Reunion on uh, major social media platforms. You'll be able to find us or just Google Luck Reunion, Luck Texas. Great. Matt, thanks for coming Yeah, thanks today. for having me. Yeah, we'll be right it. back after a quick break with our sponsors. Howdy folks, I'm J-Man and welcome to part two of our in-studio interview. My next guest is Clayton Moore. 
Clay is a pioneer hemp breeder and a researcher with a passion for unlocking the full potential of this versatile plant. With a background in plant breeding and a deep understanding of the science behind hemp, Clay has made it his mission to develop innovative varieties that are both sustainable and deliver real benefits to farmers, industry, and the environment. Welcome, Clay, to Weed and Whiskey News. How you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Well, thanks, thanks for, having for uh, me on. coming up from College Station and being with us here today. Absolutely, I had to wake up very early this morning. <laughs> well, you know, if you're going to be in the agricultural space, uh, Texas A&M is a pretty good school to to uh, do uh, your education and, and your research. Now, you're a professor there almost now. Is that no, right? no, 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 no. I'm I'm still an undergraduate student, and I'll be graduating next spring. Hopefully doing graduate school there in the same program, uh, hopefully more medical cannabis than industrial hemp, but we will still, uh, I guess, accelerate our hemp program. So right time. now your focus is primarily on industrial hemp? Yes, sir. Yes, Tell sir. us more about that. So at Texas A&M, we've had our program for about three years now. Uh, we have around four graduate students and five undergraduate students that are all working together to make hemp a better plant for uh, agricultural and uh, industrial uses such as fiber, grain, and cannabinoid varieties. So. Well, with t the size of Texas and the Texas agricultural market, this could be a game changer as more and more farmers embrace uh, hemp, uh, would you say? Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. Uh, we love working with the farmers uh, that are actually here in the space right now. There's no textbooks that the colleges have written on hemp and there's a lot of textbooks out there. We just don't know what's right, what's wrong. And so we have to go back to the farmers that have been doing it for generations over the time of prohibition. So. Yep. Now, how how large is that right now? Do you know the cannabis agricultural oh, it's, uh, or it's, the uh, industrial hemp agricultural in Texas? It's huge and it's only getting better. There's a bunch of coalitions that are coming together, a lot of companies that are coming together and a lot of great news channels like Weed and Whiskey and other things like the Texas Hemp Reporter and Texas Hemp Coalition, things like that. Yeah, so. there's more and more news that's becoming available here in our state for us to understand what's actually going on with this. I recently learned that there's some manufacturing facilities that are being built in various parts of the state to process this industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit, Clay, about what kind of products can be made with industrial hemp. So a ton of products can be made actually out of uh, fibers, out of grain, and out of cannabinoids. So fiber, uh, Texas A&M's material science and engineering department actually got a $2.3 million grant to do 3D hempcrete printing. Uh, you can also make construction materials such as insulation for houses or walls, uh, anything really that you can think of that uses textiles. You can also make clothing out of them. Uh, for grain, you can create animal feed, animal stock. You can make human protein out of it. So, uh, and for cannabinoids, uh, med medical purposes. And, so. and, and I, I would have to think that we're only beginning to scratch the surface because of research now being done more and more with more states not being uh, as concerned about people having pot or marijuana yeah. and, and trying to test and understand this. We're, we're really uh, learning all the, do, the, the good benefits that we can get from this. Now, you mentioned medical cannabis. That's something that you're looking at into the future or? Uh, hopefully this uh, April 28th is the last day for the deadlines of the new applications for med licenses here in Texas. There was currently three licenses that got released when they first released the medical licenses, but only two companies actually blew up and actually are doing anything with them. Uh, and then they're thinking of releasing, they said that they were gonna be releasing up to eight licenses, but a lot of people are saying that it's probably only gonna be three to five licenses. And so hopefully there might be a company that we can work with in the near future and make a collaboration with A&M and the College of Medicine and do some research in cannabis. So how long has this program, program been going on at A&M? Um, so. For three years now, uh, we started in 2020. I've only been with the program since 2021 uh, of the summer. I actually started an internship in Corpus Christi and my current boss hired me right out of the field when he saw how good I took care of his hemp plants. At the well, research, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So you've got a green thumb yourself. You, uh, uh, are, are a native Texan, I think. Is yes, that right? sir. I'm an eighth generation Texan and a seventh generation farmer. It skipped my mom. She became a lawyer. So. Uh, okay, you got that, folks. <laughs> Eight and seven. This fellow's roots, they run real deep here in this state. And uh, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, only fitting that A&M be the place that you're at doing this kind of stuff. Well, we're going to have to wrap here, but tell us about 
uh, how people can learn more about what you're doing. Uh, look at that camera right there. Tell okay. them about how they can learn more about what you're doing and about your thing called Chill. And then we'll get you back on again in the future to give us an update about Chill. Okay. Yeah. So you can reach me out on my LinkedIn if you just look up Clayton W. Moore. You can also find me on Instagram at Clay Hemp. Uh, the Cannabis Hemp Innovation League is a mouthful, so we call it CHILL for short. It's a student organization that I started at Texas A&M University to uh, emphasize on academia and research that is going towards cannabis and to destigmatize de cannabis uh, so that it can be less controversial to everyone. We also want to make sure everyone uh, has a place in cannabis uh, that is at Texas A&M, so we are non-major specific, and we actually differ over 50 different majors in diversity of students across the board. So, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Folks, Clay Moore, Hemp Industry Research, we're going to be doing some videos with this fella, and we'll have them on the Weed and Whiskey TV where you can learn more and more about this wonderful plant. Clay, thanks again for being yeah. on here today. We'll be right back after a quick break with our next guest. Infusion. Tasting. Weekly recipes. Celebrity chefs. Coming in 2023. Only on Weed and Whiskey TV. We are so happy to welcome Jordan and Parker Bergeron to the show. Jordan was born in Santa Fe, New Mexico and moved to Texas at a young age. Parker is a native Texan growing up in Louisville. Their company, Infinite Greens, was established in 2019 cultivating hydroponically grown organic leafy greens and vegetables. They pivoted to convert the farm to the hemp industry with the mission of providing the highest quality hemp flour. Parker obtained his Master Cannabis Grower Certification from the Cannabis Training University, and with a strong background in hospitality and an interest for health and wellness, they support cannabis education while managing relationships to elevate the customer experience. Jordan and Parker, welcome to Weed and Whiskey News. Thank you. Thanks for having Glad us. to be here. Okay, so now uh, tell me a little bit first off. Uh, I want to learn about y'all as a couple, but uh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> cannabis growing certification that's like a college degree I in this know. thing <laughs> so I, i've grown for a lot longer than that i just went out and got a certification after we became a company to basically show everybody that i have a certification in this and not just i've been growing well you know credentialing and credibility is a is a huge factor no matter what industry you're in my, my wife is in the art industry she's got something called edac credentials people that are attorneys they got a jd behind their name okay yeah. so there is an accreditation available for people that grow now that's fantastic we want to learn more about that in the future but now we want to learn about you as a couple this is something y'all doing together we yes. are we yes. are parker's <laughs> always had a green thumb i think he's always been harvesting growing everything but when it became legal here um, to grow hemp, we kind of just were pushed right into it and it made sense. Now here we are. We'll okay, I, I love to ask this question. As I mentioned, my wife and I were entrepreneurial mm -hmm. family ourselves. Uh, whose idea was it? So I was actually growing tomatoes and stuff for us in our house. And uh, she had a friend that said, hey, you should go check out this guy's tomato farm. And it turned out that he had sold his whole tomato farm. And we just walked into a huge like 20 by 100 greenhouse full of hemp flowering plants and we were just blown Taking away it back, you and know? he goes you guys should do it and i looked Beautiful. at her and she goes let's do it yeah. and well, so, there you go. so how'd y'all meet i always like to learn about that how'd y'all meet the old-fashioned way at a party at a party college. <laughs> <laughs> at a party yes i uh, actually saw her my at the end of my senior year and i was going to law school and we talked and said are we sure we want to do this it's gonna be long distance and everything worked out. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's exciting when you can be a happily married couple and work together in a business. I know that we've been doing that for 20 years. Yep. I wouldn't do anything different. My wife wouldn't do anything different. Well, she lets me come to this show now. But that, <laughs> you know, so, so tell us a little bit about Infinite Greens and, 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 and what you do there. 
So Infinite Greens, we are a flower company and we eventually want to breed, but right now there's not that space. So we're just going to stick to flower and we're going to sell flower. And our goal is to have high quality, small batch flower because you run into this issue where I was talking about 20 by 100 greenhouse and quality has gone at that point. You can't control quality in that big of a space. And High Times actually wrote an article about it the other day about how in Colorado, California, they just can't keep up with quality. So our goal is to stay small, 150 square feet tops of canopy space and have some of the best flower that you yeah you know. uh, uh, the cat the craft beverage industry exactly you know it's, uh, it, it, it's is a model that they've been able to successfully do right certainly seems like cannabis could follow in that in that in that same in that, in that same so uh your product how do people get your product so we're online and then you can i we do drop-offs in the local dallas area we ship because mm -hmm. we put hemp so we can ship all 50 states um, and then we also do farmer's markets. So if you're on our Instagram, you'll see us post about farmer's markets and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And in the future, you're thinking about maybe even having a brick and mortar or something? Yeah. We're looking into a brick and mortar or at least a site where you can come pick up at the farm itself. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so now how long have you been growing this plant? <laughs> uh, probably 14 years or more. Um, before hemp would really exist. Yeah, the green well, thumb's always been there. there. <laughs> the green thumb's always been there for two months. The mom in the closet there in the bedroom or something. You that, know, oh, Dad you got, got caught when he was a kid with it in the closet, and I still guess it just sort of passed down the, the yeah. rain. So uh, um, I actually was doing it before hydroponic stores existed in Texas. So um, you, I literally drove to a lady's garage, and that's where the hydroponic store was back in the day, and she had moved here from California. So, so Parker, you're the green thumb. So Jordan, you deal with the marketing and the uh, sales and all those type of things. I do. I help facilitate businesses, events, anything that's coming up in that kind of regard. Parker's the brains and the green thumb, and I am there to kind of help facilitate, connect, bring um, the people and the community together. Not only ours, but the people who still are looking to be educated on what weed and whiskey is and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. So your grow, help me understand, is that inside? Is that? Yes, our grow is completely indoors, hundred percent climate controlled, humidity controlled, everything's controlled to the T basically. I don't vary off by one or two numbers on everything. Um, there's nothing in the greenhouse, so it's no sun, it's all lights. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and is there a specific strain that you're growing? Is, uh, so or right, does it change from time to time? Uh, right now we have our Bergeron's main- Bergeron's best is probably, uh, that's the strain, right? There you uh, go, uh, coined yeah. it. Get that you heard it here first. <laughs> well, I think, I think everybody actually in this hemp industry here in Texas and especially locally um, has sort of been testing out to see what's better and everything. Our flagship's proof of life, it's what we started with and it can stand up against anything. I could mess up one day and it'll come back the next day just totally fine. Give me that name again, what did you say? Proof of life. Proof of life. Yes. Now, did, were you, did, is this a historical name from the ancient archives or did you come up with that yourself? So the name actually came from the breeder. Okay. Um, the breeder has actually gone under, it was an Oklahoma company and you know, everybody in Oklahoma is sort of the wild, wild west. 10,000 people have a grower's license yep. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my understanding from some of our investigative researchers are probably about that same number of illegal farms that may yep. be from a foreign actor. Apparently yep. they busted five of them the other day. Exactly. Uh, I'm not going to mention any Chinese people's <laughs> names, but that's where they, Chinese people, but Chinese people, but anyway, <laughs> nothing against those ones, but don't do it illegally. Do it the correct way. Right. So I knew the one going under and I, I bought all the seeds before they went under. So. As far as I know, unless you're getting from somebody else. Right, Parker, you got to help me with this because back when I first started, there was always seeds, mostly seeds in the bags and sticks yeah. and a little bit of stuff that you were able to. And as things have evolved, I don't rarely know of the last time I had any flour that had a seed in it. Yeah, so but you still have to have seeds to make it grow. We buy the seeds. We don't grow the seeds ourselves. Eventually, we want to breed our seeds, and those would be in separate chambers, and we wouldn't sell those buds. So you pick the seeds off as the plant's growing, or how do you make it not have seeds? <laughs> so we only plant females. We make sure there's no males and there's no stress, because any stress will make it hermaphrodite. It's a little biased, and but, put, you know, <laughs> it seeds. makes it better. You got to do what you got to do. You know? Women are in control. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. when we hand harvest, we actually look for that. Hand if, harvest. If we see seeds, We'll just yeah. throw it away. Well, you know, I've seen some of these industrial, uh, 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 both the, not the industrial hemp, but the, uh, the the cannabis that we like to smoke. And they got these big combines. Looks like they're yeah. doing corn, you yeah. know, ears of corn or the buds that are, you know, and I'm like, be nice to and it. That goes I, back to quality. Exactly. It's and quality I, over quantity. Even when I saw people start here in Texas, mm -hmm. when they're harvesting, they were just throwing the plants yeah. they harvest right on the ground in the dirt. I was like, 
I don't want to smoke that or eat that uh, if it's yeah, just been running in the dirt the whole time. Ours doesn't even touch the ground. Oh, no, you said eat that because some people will take the Gums. flour mm -hmm. and make their own can right. of butter exactly. or, or an isolate or a Honey. Man, and boy, that mm -hmm. My fifth grade thing right there on my vocabulary, <laughs> those words. Get, yep. But you have to understand all that stuff. In, so in we, have, we had somebody who actually bought our flour so that they could make their own butter. They didn't want us to make it. They make their own stuff out of it, and that's what they prefer to do. Now, so. Is your product available to other retailers? Do you have a, a, a wholesale market where some of the uh, storefronts and dispensaries could have the Bergeron's best? Or Yes, yeah, so we have, we have, I like that name. <laughs> we have a wholesale and we are trying to get into more stores. We were in a store, but it actually moved out of Texas. So right, right. that's why we're no longer in so an actual your, store right now. Is your product something that can only be sold in Texas? No, we can ship out of states. If you, if you buy want. online, we, we can ship it. But if you wanted to sell a pre-roll, you had to send it to somebody else to do the pre-roll. Boy, isn't this thing messed yeah. up, folks? I know. Someday they'll get this figured <laughs> it, out. Yeah. It is really crazy. Yeah. I mean, we're technically not even allowed to advertise that we sell the flour for smoking. So, so how do you get the word out, uh, uh, Jordan? It's all about our audience and the platforms that we use. So we're all over the place. We word of mouth, always the best. We really surround ourselves with our community. Um, we work hard to make connections and to make sure we're staying up with the education, the knowledge, what's going on in today's world. And then on all these platforms, I mean, we want to talk to you. We want to know what you want. So whatever the consumer is looking for, we want to deliver that in the best quality that we can. So it's constantly educating ourselves and then educating ourselves with what the consumers want too. Right. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of yield do you get out of your small batch? How many pounds a cycle? So out of a four by four um, canopy space, I can get two to three pounds. And, and, and is that every 90 days or is that? So I, I have two four by four spaces and I can cut basically flip pop them. So one will harvest after three weeks, another will harvest after another three weeks. Three weeks, okay, because I've met somebody else Just on like I'm a two staggering. or three week uh, uh, cycle on his thing, but is the growth cycle that fast now or does it still take 90 days or so to get to the... So I should say it's it's three weeks um, between the harvest, but there's a lot of background. Like I'm vegging in a whole other room oh, okay. and letting those grow big. So literally I'm just putting them in. It's just yeah. a continual so it's a, cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Babies to big to yeah. here, yeah. babies yeah. to exactly. here to big. Yeah. You just keep that going. So you have to do this seven days a week, I guess. Oh, yeah. These are your babies. You got to <laughs> talk to them. You're a plant whisperer now. I play music yeah. sometimes and she laughs oh, at me. Oh, like, <laughs> you, you're in there. You got no heavy metal. So the plants might not like exactly. you. I'll be soothing you. Yeah. You gotta talk to your plants. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. right. Roll me up, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. something like that. We take exactly. the pictures in there, yeah. just like God. Some in, Willie so. Nelson. Yeah, there you go. There. Mm -hmm. Well, we're fixing to have to wrap it up here. So why don't we let Jordan look at that camera and tell them how? Tell our partakers how they can find out more about y'all. Yes, definitely. So reach out to us: um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Infinite Greens at DTX.com. We've got websites, um, all kinds of things. Just shoot us a message, and we are here to cater cater and sponsor to you guys. So thank you. Thanks for the time today, Jordan and Parker Bergeron. Great folks, glad to have them on here today. We at Weed and Whiskey News have a goal to have plane talkers and straight shooters bring you real information and news using an entertaining format. Thank you for partaking with us today. Check out our reels from Willie Nelson's Luck Reunion and post about upcoming guests and events on Instagram at Weed and Whiskey TV. I'm Jay Mann wishing you a safe, fun weekend and the belated happy 420. We'll be back next Friday at 420 p.m. Weed and Whiskey News. News with a twist.